Good morning, officially. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. I just want to thank you guys so much for your prayers and support because the way the Lord worked up there is just, I can't get over the thought. I don't think neither one of us can. Um, just to show his hand in it, we were originally supposed to go to a village called Rampart. And it's above Fairbanks and would have to go in through a boat on the Yukon River. And with it becoming the 4th of July, there was uncertainty of people being sober to get us back safely <laughs> to our destination. And so the Lord worked it out for us to go to Mento, a village called Mento. And I tell you, the Lord's hand there was just oh, powerful. Uh, just with the mm -hmm. unity and the team, Kirsten had only met one person um, before, and the others were from Oklahoma, Colorado, Kansas, mm -hmm. Seattle, New Orleans. So there was a vast team there, and just the way that the team, that the Lord used that team was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was seamless. Every single day mm -hmm. there was an opportunity for us to one come alongside of each other and minister like as as kind of a unit as the body and then two there was opportunity for ministry almost every hour of the day i mean we had kids that would they would come at like 11 o'clock in the in the morning which sounds late to us but it's actually like i don't know 8 a.m there mm -hmm. um and that's just because of the lifestyle is a lot different in the village. But I mean, we'll mention that in a second. But they would come at 11 o'clock, and they wouldn't leave until 2 o'clock in the morning. We had the opportunity to come alongside those kids, some that have parents that are abusive, that are absent. Um, one little girl's parents, like we never even met them. They weren't there the entire week. Um, so we had an opportunity, especially to her, to minister. And her name's Nevea, which is, as she introduced herself, heaven spelled backwards. Yeah. Um, and she got to watch us watch us during worship, and she got to watch us during quiet time, and she got to ask us those questions. Why do you cry during worship? What an opportunity. Um, we, got to, we got to meet and, and bond with believers, and we got, to, we got to share with them and minister to them, and then they minister to us. Yeah, I tell you, when you go on a mission trip, you know you expect to be able to minister to others. However, when you're ministered back to by those people, I tell you, it is truly humbling. And you just really see God's hand. Um, the people that we got a lot of ministry out of and that ministered to us so much was a uh, husband and wife that are believers, and they shared their testimony. Mm. And he shared his testimony. Okay, this guy was addicted to alcohol and to drugs, and his brother had committed suicide a couple of years before before all this had happened and long story short long testimony short is that his brother came unto him as a demon and he would hear his brother's voice and see black objects flying around and so I mean his testimony was just powerful so if you do not believe in demonic spiritual warfare I mean it, it's it's real there are other bad things out there and just his testimony and the way that the Lord orchestrated it all to, for him to become saved and to get rid of those demons. To save their relationship, yeah, to save their Yeah, and their, their marriage and yeah. their kids. I mean, it's just like, oh, I mean, it's, it was powerful. And we talked for three, four hours, I guess, after, uh, I mean, two, three o'clock in the morning. I mean. Which she, wasn't uncommon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'd mentioned her, her their lifestyle was very different. You know, we'd stay up till two, three o'clock in the morning ministering because we had all these great opportunities. Uh, I don't know if we got a picture of it, but they didn't have school buses. They had bicycle racks. That's how 
the people traveled, dad or four-wheeler. Yeah. And so, so we would walk with them to their houses. If there was a child that came to VBS and didn't have no one to walk home with them, we would walk with them home and share with them about the gospel. And we were down by the river and like oh, yeah. telling people about Christ and, and everything. I mean, literally mm -hmm. all night. <laughs> There's um, a boy fishing for pike. It's a fish. And uh, just, I mean, you know, perfect example. Hey, have you ever heard of the Fisher of Men story? I mean, just boom. I mean, the Lord opened so many doors. Mm -hmm. uh, we had three church services. We saw the Lord uh, four at VBS accepted Jesus. Uh, one at a church service, and we did door-to-door -door ministry, and one was right on the verge. Yeah. So we just trust that you know the Lord did His business with him. Yeah, I got to share my testimony mm. with Dwight, and we were at his house, and we'd actually we had stopped to talk to his father, and Freddie took us in. He was showing us all of his sled dog, you know, memorabilia and his photos and everything. He was telling us all about it, and he had to go to work, and um, I had a feeling we weren't there for Freddie. And um, someone came down the hall, and I turned, and I looked. And I'm like, that's who we're there for. And he came out, and he just sat there, and he's about 20 years old. And, and before, we could, before we could wrap it up with Freddie, he's like, do you, do you know the Bible? And we said, yeah. He said, I have a question. I mean, God opens doors. He was there. I mean, he's there in Minto now, obviously. We didn't bring God, but we were um, fortunate enough to be used by the Holy Spirit. And so we were able to share with Dwight my testimony and then of course the story about the prodigal son he had been in a car accident um dwight had um the week before and he almost died there was like propane in the back of the truck and just a lot of different things that was going on he really shook him and um that just opened up a door and an opportunity for us to to talk to him and he acknowledged that he um would have died and gone to hell and um you know he he was very broken his mom had been praying for him for a while and he he said that he wanted to accept the lord but he wanted to do it alone he wanted to have that personal and intimate time with with god so we you know, we prayed over him and then we left, but I mean, we're trusting in the Lord that, that, that was brought to fruition. So, I mean, and that's not the only thing a lot of, and I didn't expect this, but a lot of what we were doing was ministering to the believers there. Um, unfortunately there's a lot of, um, dissension and, and just separation in the belief in the body, um, of believers in Minto. There was a revival in the seventies and yeah. what had happened was that all these people came to know the Lord and that generation now is, is older and but they're not doing anything they're not moving um the the body is is sort of broken it's ineffective and so these kids are coming in they're hungry they're hungry for the word of god they had been to one other vbs yeah, like the, the week, week before, before yeah. these kids are coming back because they know that we have answers um i just have to say i just have to say something we are not called into salvation. We are not called into salvation. God did not send his son to die for us so we can sit on a pew, so we can sit in our homes, so we can have our own relationship and not share it. This is supposed to be, when you're saved, that's not the end of the story. That's the beginning. That is your commissioning. You are commissioned to go out. And these people were not following through with that. Um, and so we were able to pray over some of the believers and really encourage them and, and kind of equip them with different ideas about how they could minister to their own people, their own neighbors people who are struggling with drugs and alcohol in a, in a village that's supposed to be dry. I mean, in a village with no police officers, um, they're struggling with these things and we were able to equip the believers. But I encourage you, you need to step into a ministry. If you're not ministering to someone right now, you need to do it. Someone in here needs to, to move. You need to not move from this church necessarily, but we need to go out. Like we can fill ourselves up, but if we're not pouring ourselves out, what's the point? Christ did not save us so we can sit here and revel in that glory. Yes, let's let's worship him. Let's bring other people to worship him. Let's let's bring other souls into the kingdom. Um, that was that was really a big burden on my heart because of the mm -hmm. the believers there and how there were there were elders in the village and they did not reach out to these young people, these twenty year olds. Their neighbors, their kids, they weren't ministering to their children. Yeah, I'm saved. Your son's not. What are you doing? Uh, she spoke of in that and this made me think of how the Lord works in mysterious ways um, there was a Amish guy that was a part of our team uh, through Last Frontier Ministries okay and you if you know about the Amish there's new order Amish and there's old order Amish and he was an old order Amish so you know they're not even supposed to fly on an airplane um, you know there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes along with that but and of course you know he had his bicycle but 
Anyway, what I'm saying is that the boy that got saved, Christian, the night at the church service was used by that Amish boy. The, the Lord used uh, Raymond to witness to Christian. Okay, uh, The global partners had said that they'd been praying for Christian for over nine years. That's how long these, this ministry has been going on in Rampart, uh, Mento. And they said that they've been praying for him for nine years. Specifically. Specifically. By name. And said, well, we was down at the river one night. And they had snowmobiles. Okay? They go on snow, correct? Okay, well, you know, it's a funny thing. They're sitting down at the river. And we was talking, and this one guy said, have you ever seen one go across the water? I said, no, but I have seen it done. So, you know, they got a couple of the townspeople around. They're like, hey, yeah, come on, come on, do this, do this. And so they got Christian to take his snowmobile out across the water. Okay? Now, that, it was neat. Okay? I mean, something. It was dangerous. It was pretty neat. And we saw one got sunk. It, it sinked. But, sunk. So anyway, that's, that's not the point. But so here, after Christian gets back from riding his snowmobile on the water, Raymond, the Amish guy, comes up and said, hey, can I try? So, I mean. Something he's and, not supposed to do. And, and right. So, I mean, you know, Christian allowed him to. And he just, he got so far out that we was like, oh, quiet, quiet. And every now and then you could hear. <laughs> and so, you know, he hadn't wrecked. He hadn't sunk it. And so I believe that the Lord used that to open that door for Christian. That night, Christian came to that church service. The global partner said that that was the first time that boy had become uh, had went into that church. So there is the power of God and how God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. So if you feel led, like who feels led to take a snowmobile across the water? Apparently Raymond did because it used. <laughs> That's right, Carson. So apparently, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and just the power of God and the peace with it was amazing. Uh, just to want to share, you know, Alaska became a state in 1959. Uh, the 49th state, uh, Hawaii was the 50th. And so when it became the 49th state, the government stepped in and made it the Native American uh, Settlement Act. And it hurt a lot of feelings. There's a lot of hard tension with that, uh, with just talking to people that was brought up multiple times. And they have a real hard time with forgiveness and holding a grudge. And so, you know, we've prayed with several people about that. And that's, the Lord, yeah. I was just going to say, that's where a lot of the alcoholism and mm -hmm. then, of course, um, jobs are always an issue. But mm -hmm. alcoholism and suicide are prevalent. Um, Native, Native Alaskans um, have three times the national average suicide rate. So, I mean, it's, it's shocking. It, it's absolutely shocking. Um, and there had been a suicide in the village not even not long yeah. before we had gotten there, maybe a right. few weeks, and they had had um, kind of a memorial service. But um, mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but, you know, they're just a very calm, soft-spoken people. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't say nothing unless they really, truly think about what they're going to say. I mean, we even with the youth, they'll come up and they'll start playing ball with you, but they will not start a conversation. And, it, you know, if you try to make small talk, hey, how's the weather? The weather's pretty. Yeah. Or it's good. So one night we was walking home with the boy, and his name was Isaiah. And, you know, he'd been hanging around kind of like Kirsten had said from, you know, 11, 12 o'clock to 1.30 until we just finally said, okay, we're going to go to bed. Go and home. so we just <laughs> finally, you know, I was walking beside him down the road and just not saying nothing, just letting the Lord use it. And he just looked up at me, and he's probably, what, sixth, fifth grade? Yeah. And he said, do you want to hear a hunting story? I said, yes, I want to hear a hunting story. We talked for the next hour about duck and goose hunting. I've never been, never had the stuff. But that's what he wanted to talk about. So we talked about with him. He was one of the souls that was saved. It's all about relationships, especially in in these native villages, because there Perfect. there is that that hurt and that mistrust. Um, so they want to 
they want to know that you actually care. It's not mm -hmm. just that you're coming here and you're laying this thing at their feet. They want to know that you're invested in their lives. And that's exactly what we did throughout the whole week. And yeah. we, we had the privilege of staying um, for their, their 4th of July celebration. Um, several of our team members ran the foot race um, around the village, including Nathan. Good job. He came in 10th. Uh, out of 20, so it was good. Halfway there. Um, anyway, and then we were able to stay and enjoy this, this very interesting meal and, and, you know, some good food as well. And, yeah. and then we played a game called American Eagle, which if you want to hear about something that's super dangerous, I'll be glad to tell you about that. But so, that, that opportunity was given to us because they knew that, that we were invested in them. Like, we, they treated us like we were a part of the village. And that's something else that Kirsten said is that, they felt like we were just coming in there and trying to change their ways. However, when we first came in, there was an elder that came in to where we were staying and shared about their culture. Mm -hmm. um, Luke. Luke. And so we had been in a church service, and I talked to a fellow. I believe his name was Josh. And just, you know, he seemed kind of standoffish, like, you know, well, I'm in the church service, but, you know, I don't really want to talk to you. Just just leave me alone. You know, you've got to respect that. However, it came out to be our last night. That was Sunday night when we had the potluck, the cookout, and uh, played the game. Someone got to talking to him off of our team. Someone on our team talked to him and said, you know, Elder Luke came in and told us about your culture and about how you guys have been treated and we did not come to change anything. We come to minister. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that guy just, 180. just completely turned around. He got in and he started playing that contact game. Keep in mind he's like in his 60s. So, I mean, <laughs> just the way that the Lord moves is just still, mm -hmm. I mean, the fire. The fire of the Holy Spirit inside of you. If it's, you know, dwindling down, we've got to do something to flame it back up. Because yeah. he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care if it's India or C Street. Yeah, this is C Street. Okay. If it's our neighbor across the road or across the creek or across the globe, we are ambassadors of Christ. We represent God. So we just want to encourage you know, the Lord is faithful. The Lord is just. The Bible says not to be um, hearers only, but doers. Mm -hmm. And if you have been sitting and you've been, you've been waiting, you've been letting somebody else step in, I don't care if you're older, younger, whatever, there's no excuse. Now is the time for you to do. Now is the time for you to be obedient to the Lord. Thank you.